All right, good morning, everyone. I work with Mike Maloney at goldsilver.com, and I'm also on the board at SWP in Grand Cayman. I worked at Casey Research for a number of years, so we are gonna have some fun this morning, and I have a silver coin to give away for the person who can shout out the number one reason when we get there, all right? The number one reason silver is going to skyrocket, in my opinion. So I believe there's going to be another bull market in gold and silver at some point, whether it's this year or next year, at some point we're going to get into another bull market. And like any asset in a bull market, gold and silver are going to rise. But I think silver is going to absolutely skyrocket. So why do I think that? What's the number one reason, not yet, what's the number one reason I think that's going to happen? Okay, is it because silver demand is rising? Demand globally is rising all over the world. Not just the US coin sales are down, but you have to look at the entire picture. And the entire picture says that demand for silver is rising globally. It's not letting up. You can see it's almost near an all time high. So is that why? Or is it because of rising solar demand? Solar, this is the amount of silver that's used in solar globally you can see that in 2007, it was zero. And you can see the trend continues to go higher. It's at an all-time high. And look at the instat. Not a lot of people know this. California just passed a law that says every new home that is built in California beginning January 1st, 2020, must have solar on the house. Solar uses a lot of silver. That's built-in demand. Or is it because of Chinese demand for silver? This is the amount of silver fabrication demand inside of China. And by the way, look at 2008, 2009, the Great Recession. Silver demand didn't let up at all. You know, what recession? They continue to buy silver. They're using increasing amounts of silver every year. Or is it because the silver demand explosion in India? Since 2006, you can see the rise in fabrication demand for gold is up about 20%, but for silver in India, it's almost doubled. Or am I wildly bullish on silver because of rising industrial demand? Industrial demand, industrial uses for silver continue to climb every year. We find new uses all the time. That's still continuing to happen. This is just for automobiles. This is a projection from several sources about how much silver we're gonna use in automobiles going forward. It's not gonna let up, it's gonna increase. And one of the reasons is because when you go green, electric vehicles use more silver than an actual combustion engine. So when you go green, you are by default going silver. So the amount of silver that's going to be used up for industrial uses, including any green technology, including electric vehicles, is gonna to continue to rise. Is that why I'm bullish? Or am I thinking silver's gonna scream higher because a lot of silver's been lost and can't be recycled? Almost half the silver, since we have had records on silver production and silver storage, has, is now in a landfill. And of course, just the opposite is true for gold. Is that why? Or is it because silver supply is falling? So I'm here to tell you that it's official now, 2018 silver supply was actually, it actually fell last year. The first report we saw, we'll get more data as this year goes along, but for five years in a row now, silver supply has begun to fall. And look at the second bullet point. For the first time in recorded history, both mine supply and scrap have fallen for two consecutive years. That's the first time that's ever happened since we've been keeping records. So it's no longer a prediction. A lot of people are predicting gold supply is gonna drop, and it is. New supply is gonna drop. But for silver, it's already happening. It's a trend in motion. There's a good quote there from CPM Group. You can see this is gonna last for a decade. New supply of silver is gonna continue to fall for the next 10 years. Am I wildly bullish because stockpiles of silver are abysmally low? If you added up all the silver that is kept in inventory by governments around the world, it totals less than 5% of one year supply. It's negligible, it's almost irrelevant. But what if they need to start buying silver for a variety of uses? 
China's the largest holder of silver, not a lot of people know that, but they've had no silver transactions since 2006, and when they did, they sold a third of their silver holdings. Russia sold 90% of its holdings in 2013. France, Switzerland, Austria have sold all of their silver. The Silver Institute, silver does not seem to be a part of strategic reserves anymore. No kidding. <laughs> But what if silver becomes a, a, an issue of national security? For They need, just need it for industrial reasons. They need to begin to inventory it again like they have in the past. What if that happens? Is that why I'm so bullish on silver? Or is it because silver is such a, sediment is such at an extreme low? And there's no better way for me to demonstrate that to you than by listing the topics that were advertised for this conference. What's missing in this list? Ladies and gentlemen, for what's billed as the world's largest resource investment conference, silver is not listed on the webpage advertising it. There's no more perfect example of low sediment for silver than that. And of course, when sediment's low, that's when you want to buy. And ex in an extreme low, there tends to be a bigger rebound to the, to the high side. Do I think silver's gonna skyrocket? Because it did last time. A lot of you have seen stuff like this, but in the 1970s, gold rose 2,300%, silver rose 3,100%. Is that why I'm bullish? Just because it did it before? Or is it because silver's so deeply underpriced? Look at this. This is every metal that we mine, the major metals that we mine, there's their 1980 high price. When we had inflation, commodities were rising. There's their 2018 price. Copper is up 200% since its 1980 high. Lead, 70%. Nickel, zinc, look at tin, 500%. Down to platinum, 250%. Gold's up 50%. But silver, it's 70% below its 1980 high. Every other metal is above its 1980 high. Silver is still below. That shows you just how dramatically undervalued the price is. Is that why I'm so bullish? Here's another reason, here's another way to show just how underpriced silver is. This is silver, silver's ratio to the S&P 500. It is actually lower now than it was during the 2008 financial crisis. The silver price is lower now relative to the S&P 500 than it was when the markets were crashing. Am I bullish because I think there's a huge short squeeze coming? The speculators are usually wrong at the extremes, and we have an extreme right now. So is that why I'm bullish? Because they're so short, when the silver price begins to move up, they're gonna have to cover, right? Which means they're gonna have to buy. They're gonna be going long. And there's such a big short position that that buying could push the price up higher than it normally would. Is that why? Look, all of these are going to contribute to a rising silver price, to a screaming silver price. But the number one reason the silver price is going to scream is because, anybody, this is a one ounce silver coin from the Olympics of 1976. Nope, it's not one of the ones I mentioned. Say again. Huh? JP Warren, no. No? No. No. Louder. What's he saying? No. 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 The number one reason, in my opinion, my humble opinion, is because the silver market is itsy bitsy teeny tiny. The silver market, I know a lot of people know this, but it's actually smaller than I think many people realize. This is the amount of global, this, the amount of silver that's represented as a portion of global wealth around the world. The bar in the far left is what it was in 1980. You can see where we are now. We're less than 5% of what it represented in 1980. It's very small. It's not 2%, it's not 0.2%, it's 0.02%. 
This is uh, the market cap of some of the more popular stocks. There's the market cap of a Apple Computer, Exxon Mobil, there's Disney, there's annual gold supply. If you added up all the uh, gold that's mined and, and from scrap every year and gave a price to it, it would equal the equivalency of Disney Corporation, one company, that's it. There's Starbucks, there's General Electric. General Electric's one of the worst performing stocks of 2018. It's a terrible stock to own, right? And yet it's five times bigger still than annual gold, than annual silver supply, which is the, the bar in the far right. Okay, this is where it gets fun. Speaking of Apple Computer, the left represents the cash balance of Apple Computer in their last quarterly report. It's just under two and a half billion dollars. The small little half coin you see on the right represents every ounce of silver that went toward investment last year. All coins, bars, and ETFs. Every ounce that went toward investment last year. Apple Computer could buy every ounce of silver that was bought for investment last year, whether physical or paper product, with 0.5% of its cash. This is Berkshire Hathaway's cash position, a little over a billion dollars in their last quarterly report. The little coin and a quarter you see on the right, that represents every ounce of registered silver stock on the COMEX. So Berkshire Hathaway could buy every ounce of silver that's registered on the COMEX with 1.25% of its cash. Now, I'm not saying Apple Computer or Berkshire Hathaway are going to do that, but you have to admit just how dramatically small this market really is. And what if institutional investors get interested in silver? They want to take a position in silver. The left bar there is pension funds, 15 trillion. Life insurance companies, six and a half trillion. Hedge funds, over three trillion. Private equity, two and a half trillion. The teeny tiny bar on the right represents the largest investment year for silver demand ever. It was 2009, it was 235 million ounces. That's how it compares to how much money is sloshing around with all these institutional investors. What if they just want to take a small position? And here's my favorite, where's Waldo? This represents the total global money supply, M2 around the world in US dollars. Each pack of dollars there represents 100 billion US dollars. Where's silver? Where's Waldo? Can you find it? Where is it? Silver is that teeny tiny dot in the very bottom right. That's the entire silver market. Not one year supply, it's the entire silver market right now. So what if just a little bit of that money wants to come into the silver market? What would happen to the price? What can volatility do for you? In the late 1970s, silver rose 35% in one trading day in 1979. If we get another bull market in gold and silver, I do think we'll see that again in silver. Okay, so let's talk about how to invest with all this. Where's my timer? Uh, in past bull markets, silver outperforms gold and silver stocks outperform silver. And here's a good example. From January 1st, 2009 to their peak in 2011, the gold price almost doubled, silver almost tripled. First Majestic Silver went up tenfold in that two and a half year period. So what we want is we want leverage to the silver price, right? So to get the best leverage, we want companies that have at least 50% of their revenue coming from silver. There's a lot of companies out there that, ha that produce silver, but it's not more than 50% of their revenue. So if we want leverage to silver, we want primary silver producers, right? There's only one problem. There's hardly any. Core Mining is thought of as a silver company, right? 2018, 30% of their revenue came from silver production. In 2019, it's projected from BMO to be 28%. Fresneo, obviously thought of as a silver company, about a third. Hecla, less than 25%. Hawkchild, ooh, they might get to 50% this year. 
Pan American Silver. Only 28% of their revenue is going to come from silver this year. Tahoe is not really a, a, a silver company at this point. Endeavor Silver, finally somebody at over 50% of their revenue coming from silver. And look at First Majestic Silver. 66% of their revenue this year will come from silver production. First Majestic Silver, less than 50%. Fortuna Silver, less than 50%. Silver Corp. SSR Mining, the former Silver Standard, Ross Bates company. It's not really even a silver company at this point. I put impact there. Uh, they do get about 90%. That's a very small producer. The point is the primary silver industry is very tiny. It's the market cap of the S&P on the left and the others. You can see the primary silver companies there. Okay, let's get into the picks. So the first pick, I think, is First Majestic Silver because they're already a producer and they're, they get 66% this year year projected of their revenue will come from silver production. So if we want leverage to silver, again, the key is we want leverage to silver. They're a clear buy. And there's the reasons why I think you should uh, consider picking up this stock. They are a primary silver producer. Growth's going to be up this year. Costs are going to fall. High intensity grinding. I don't have time to go into that right now, but that's going to uh, be a potential game changer. It's going to increase recoveries for the company, so they'll produce more silver based on the same amount of ore. The stock was 24 in 2011, 17 in 2016, to $6 now. There's also the possibility of a massive short squeeze. There's more short sellers now on the stock than there was in 2016. And when the price started to move up, then the stock tripled. And yet we have two and a half times more short positions now. So there's a potential for a massive short squeeze. This is just a quick little graph that shows you 66% of their revenue is going to come from silver more than all the other producers out there right now. I like pre-producers. If you've seen any of my presentations before, I really like this. We've done a lot of research on this. This particular graph is from Frank Holmes. If you buy at the construction or production decision from then until first pour, you have a 90% return 90% of the time in the stock. This is a sweet spot to, to buy a stock. Who do I like? I really like Mag Silver. They're going to be the largest and richest by 2020. And again, meeting our criteria, approximately 70% of their revenue is going to come from silver once they get into full production. I really like that. You can read some of the other things there later. Alexco Silver, I really like them. They've had some permitting issues or delays, I should say. Uh, but they do expect to get them by the end of next quarter. Once they do Keno Hill, all their deposits will be fully permitted, ready to go. And once they get into production, it's going to be 75 to 85 percent of their revenue will come from silver. We like that. We want that leverage. And one of my favorite picks, Silvercrest Metals. This is a high-grade mine in the miking. They've already got 87 or 86 million ounces. Very high-grade. Management's worked there a long time. The stock is in strong hands. I don't have time to go through this, but this shows the largest silver mines around the world, the biggest and the richest. And you can see they're already at number six, and they haven't even started production yet. This is a very uh, good stock to buy, in my opinion. Now, the problem is the stocks went up 123% already <laughs> last year. So would you still buy it now? Well, the catalysts are they're going to have an economic study and an updated resource this quarter. They'll have pre-feasibility uh, by the end of the year and a possible construction decision. Why do we like construction decisions? Because from then, the first four, 90% return 90% of the time. So just to wrap it up, I guess I'm out of time. Um, the point to all this is the silver market is so small that it's not going to take very much money at all pouring into it to drive the price higher. And at some point, I think institutional investors, mainstream investors, banks are going to do reports and say, we want leverage to silver. Where can we get it? And they're going to go to companies that have at least 50% of their revenue coming from silver. They're not going to go to a diversified miner. No knock on those other companies, but I want leverage to silver. And I think those four picks are where you're going to get it. So I wish I had more time. I'll stay in the back if anybody has any questions, but thank you very much.